Hey guys, it's Dookie Bomb here coming to you with another episode of Elder Scrolls Online. How you guys doing today? Alright, so I tried to switch it up this time around. I sped it up for you guys and I am on the road for Radiant Destruction. This is the see all be all spell for the Templars and I wanted to grind for you guys so I can have it for the next episode and the next episodes will be uh, PvP with this character in PvP uh, and displaying the power of the Radiant Destruction but this is the road, this is the journey to get to that point um, and then so the topic is kinda conjoined with this whole journey of getting that spell um, and the spell is called Radiant Destruction and it is a DPS move so it gives damage over time um, to the enemy. Now, the topic is what game genre, I mean, not genre, but game franchise, that's a better word, game franchise that, uh, that was its own Radiant Destruction. And I have like two right now. Um, I have to go on a limb and say Halo. And when I say Halo, and by, by destruction, first and for, foremost, it doesn't mean like it's completely dead or anything like that. It just, it kind of lost its stock with me personally. This is all opinionated and if you have a different opinion, please put it into the comments and um, I can, you know, I'll read it over and, and it is what it is. I, I, I think that we're always entitled to our own opinions and we shouldn't be so uh, jumbled up on uh, whose opinion is right or wrong. This is just my opinion. But I feel like Halo. And the reason why I said that is Halo 1. Now, I was playing video games. I was getting the consoles back then too. But I don't remember the time it came out. It was like 2000, 2001, maybe 2002 that the Xbox came out. And Halo sold Xboxes. The original Xbox. So for a game to just be, have the power to do that, it's on another level. Um, so it already started off super strong. It started off so strong that I think it hindered its uh, other game, uh, like so Halo 2, Halo 3. Because those didn't really, I didn't buy a 360 for Halo 2, you know, um, or Halo 3 or whatever. like. Halo 1 sold Xboxes. People got the Xbox for Halo. People got Halo for Xbox. You know, like, and, and that's what it was. Halo 2, I felt, was my favorite, but it just didn't have the same feeling. It, it improved on all the mechanics. You can do dual wielding. I'm sure, I'm, pro I'm pretty positive that you couldn't do dual wielding in, in Halo 1. Um, please put in the comments if I am wrong on that. But, um,. Halo 2 was very, um, just, it was, it was just improved. It was an improved version of Halo 1. But it just never met its expectations as what Halo was. And Halo 3 still improved the mechanics, but it just, out of my favorites, it was Halo 2, and Halo 3 just didn't do it for me either. And then all the other ones kind of just dipped down in stock for me. Um, they never ever reach that first halo so that's kinda like this spell you hit someone with this spell it's a, it's a, a, a continuous beam of light 2.9 seconds and once you hit them with that light it deteriorates over time and that is the timeline of halo I'm not saying that halo is out of the loop or anything like that when halo drops people are gonna buy it but I'm saying for me personally, Halo 1 was the pinnacle. Halo 2 was an improvement as far as technical gameplay is concerned, but it just never reached that feeling that I had with Halo 1. And then all the other ones kind of just lost, lost steam for me. So it was its own Radiant Destruction, in my opinion, for that franchise. Um, and then another franchise, and please guys, you can put into the comments, I know that there are ride or die 
fans of this franchise, but it has to be Call of Duty. I have to put it on the rack and talk about it for today. Um, this is probably the best uh, example of radiant destruction, its own demise, if you will. Now, I have to be honest, I didn't get into Call of Duty until Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. To my knowledge, people say that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 was the best. Um, and I take their opinion solid, 100%, okay? I haven't really played Modern Warfare 1, I played Modern Warfare 2. And my opinion on that was, it's, it's a really good game. It was a really good game, but I was just getting into my uh, PvP Call of Duty era, and I still didn't find my niche. Was I a camper? Was I... Um, a, a rusher or a sniper or whatever I just didn't know how to handle a lot of the um, mechanics of the game so I was just running around like a headless chicken getting getting killed all the time so um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 was good for me but really what I came into my own as a Call of Duty player was Call of Duty Black Ops 1 um, but it's not fair to start it off with Black Ops 1 I'm gonna say Modern Warfare 2 was at its height and um, it's a general consensus that people say that Black Ops and Black Ops 2 weren't that good compared to Modern Warfare 2 and I'm not gonna debate with them but in my personal um, opinion and experience I had more fun with Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 than I did with Modern Warfare 2 only because I was getting really good at the game by Black Ops 2 I pretty much mastered what I wanted to do my niche was um, being a camper and by Black Ops 2 I was a sniper too and I had all sorts of cool gadgets and gizmos that helped me uh, do that that type of gameplay style so for my my general uh, feeling of Black Ops and well just the Call of Duty franchise is that I felt like it was the most solid in Black Ops 1 well Modern Warfare 2 through uh, Black Ops area and I'm not and I, I'm sorry to skip over all the other ones before them those were really good too and they had really good multiplayer as well. So I'm not skipping over them on purpose. I'm just kind of just telling you how I, when I came into it, I came into it in that chunk. Modern Warfare 2 to Black Ops 2. After that, I think that really competition became its own demise. Um, you had, um, what is it, Titanfall that came out. So it was like more of a futuristic type of game with exosuits and uh, you can jump into big machines and things like that and then you had you have Battlefield. Battlefield I think was its strongest uh, competition and if you like that type of gameplay style with a big open sandbox hop into vehicles then Call of Duty just can't compete to that game. I feel like that's a much richer series to the the warfare type of genre but Call of Duty is always gonna be like the like the iPhone of um, warfare games with that said um, I feel like Titanfall really was its demise only because um, they wanted to hop in their lane so after a couple of Call of Duties, after Black Ops 2, they started doing exosuits and started running on walls and turning invisible. And I know it's, you know, Advanced Warfare and, um, you know, Black Ops 3 and all those Call of Duties now that are more futuristic. I'll tell you this. If me personally, if I wanted to play a futuristic game, I would play Halo or, or Titanfall or any other futuristic game. Call of Duty was good for me because it was modern. It was, it, it used the guns and, and uh, technology that we have now 
and put them on display and for you to play but when they jump into everyone else's lane for me that's its own radiant destruction its own demise and i feel like that was my downfall because i i haven't got a call of duty since uh well actually i tried advanced warfare out so i played advanced warfare but i i didn't like it i couldn't even camp i couldn't even do the things i like doing i know camping is very taboo but i don't know like i i just didn't like the game i bought it and i just didn't like it i was prepared to play it and it just wasn't for me so hopefully um they can come back and hopefully halo can come back too as far as that that feeling that you had when you reached a certain prestige and um became uh you know prestige 15 or whatever prestige it was that feeling that you had when you got that new gun with the new uh, scope and uh you know like all that stuff all that stuff is definitely uh, notable and why I liked Call of Duty and then playing with all my friends we all had different gameplay styles so it was just an excellent experience and definitely one of the heights of my video game experience ever is playing Call of Duty so Call of Duty would always be one of my favorite games and I'm not talking about just one specific Call of Duty I'm just talking about the experience of Call of Duty was one of my favorite experiences uh, in video games um, but with that said it is still what it is and I feel like it was strong at one point and right now it's dipping down so it is suffering from some radiant destruction So tell me what you guys think about that, you know, um, I really feel like it's based on my opinions and my experiences, so what you might think of the Halo franchise and Call of Duty franchise might be different from what I have experienced and what I think. Um, and that just raises conversation, so you can put it into the comments below uh, what you think and, you know, Dookie, you're totally wrong, you know, I accept that, you know. or Dookie, yeah, I agree with you. I accept that too. Uh, it's just my opinion and it's how I feel about those franchises. And just to play on the whole theme of getting this awesome spell that I'm just, I'm so close to getting, um, it just adds to the theme, you know, and it just adds to what I have experienced in the past. So, um, but to, to go back, backwards and uh, go on the same theme and topic franchises that have not had a radiant destruction I feel like one big one is GTA Grand Theft Auto it was just the opposite of a radiant destruction it improved in in many ways for each and every uh, import so obviously GTA 1 I played that um, I am zero had that on the PlayStation I didn't have it personally but he had it I went over his house and played it um, it was a pretty cool game uh, I didn't really think too much of it it was different but because of the top-down view I was like okay eh, you know it's, it's really cool it's violent I think that that brought the appeal to me but um, I actually skipped over I mean I am zero did not have uh, at least to my knowledge GTA 2 so the next one was GTA 3 and that just blew everyone's roofs up you know that changed the game not just GTA but I'm just talking about competition for GTA anything around that genre of open sandbox they opened it up like tenfold and became the kingpin when it comes to that stuff so um, yeah like like so GTA 3 
Then GTA Vice City kicked it up a notch. You know, and then they added the motorcycles and all that stuff. So it was super cool. And I feel like, you know, that, that definitely added to that as well. And then San Andreas just blew everything out the water. Everything out the water. You know, and um, it just had everything. It had RPG elements. So you can get fat, you can get skinny, you can get muscular, you can learn boxing, kung fu, all that sorts of stuff. So, like, that was really, like, one of the pinnacles of GTA. And some would say that that was probably the best GTA. But then GTA 4 came out. And the graphics were crazy. Graphics were crazy. Um, big, big world. Uh, great character everything was really cool you know and then my favorite my personal favorite is the last one GTA 5 and I think it was because of the PvP I know I told you guys that I don't like PvP but it was because of the PvP that made me love the game so much um, so in its own way it was a radiant destruction in a good way because it actually does what the spell does it gives that damage it improves over time instead of degrades like the halo and call of duty that is taking the player that i'm hitting or the npc that i'm hitting perspective so i'm hitting them with the radiant destruction and they degrading over time but gta is a genre where that's the spell that I'm hitting out like that's the 2.9 seconds of damage that has been going over time like that so I feel like that is an incredible franchise and unrivaled franchise now as I say unrivaled um, that's debatable because one of my other favorite franchises is the Bethesda, uh, Skyrim, and well, Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls series. So, I um, did not play Morrowind. Um, I started with Oblivion, and Oblivion was one of my first 360 games. I think I got. I'm gonna have to double check on what my first game was, but that was definitely in my top three. Um, first game that I got for 360 and that's a, such a such a wonderful game to have when you first get a system so oblivion was really hard I feel like I was like too young for the game just like because it just it was so open world that I didn't know what to do and you know like it wasn't as linear as most games was so in that aspect it was really hard for me but um, eventually I beat it like it took me like maybe a year to beat it because a year or two but I definitely beat it and that was just one of the best experiences I had and then that allowed me to get Fallout 3 and um, then Skyrim obviously and Skyrim was the massive game that uh, brought me in and I played that for a long time a long time I don't know how long I played but I played that for a long time and that was just an incredible experience so and then just jumping into this jumping into this and having this type of uh, gameplay so imagine like Skyrim and you already max rank and you're already there as far as uh, what you are uh, um, depending on your you know class or whatever and you get to this point where you feel alone in this big world this actually kicks it up a notch and it makes it so you don't feel that way you're amongst a lot of people so in this aspect this game also is um, a radiant destruction in a good way and um, yeah, I, I really just truly believe that um, these games need to uh, improve and 
also keep on doing the good job that they're doing all right guys i finally got the radiant destruction whoa i got the 42 to get it so let's just go in here i've been building up my uh my skill points here and here we go dawn's wrath and i can get the radiant destruction burn an enemy with a ray of holy fire dealing 3816 magic damage over nine point i mean over 2.9 seconds targets below 50 percent health take up to 330 percent additional damage this is why i dedicated this whole episode to this one move it's like a finishing move from like mortal Kombat or something i definitely want this and as i level up um that magic dealing you know uh 3816 that actually gets higher so um i'm gonna you know purchase this now and put this in with my triangle because i already have a self heal on my for my puncture and sweep and then on my other two bar i have the same breath of life so i'm gonna just have that radiant destruction here um but yeah please like and subscribe and put into the comments um you know what series you think you know was its own demise in its own way like you know it could have been the first uh you know of like 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 the halo or whatever like the first halo was the really uh, was a really good halo second one arguably might have been better but then the third and fourth and fifth and the 16th one however how many are out they kind of dipped down so what you know uh series in a video game dipped down and it was its own radiant destruction its own demise its own 3816 magic damage over 2.9 seconds until then i am dookie bomb and i will see you later